Hello, this is another Out of School Care Network game tutorial and today we're going to learn how to play Othello, which is also known as Reversi. To play Othello you need a board, 8 squares by 8 squares, and I've just made this one out of paper, uh, very quick to make, just fold the paper to give yourself a bit of guideline and then draw up the lines. If you look at our uh, drafts board tutorial and games for drafts board, you'll see me making one really fast and then creating a checkered board. Quite straightforward. Uh, once you've got your board, you mark the middle squares like this with colours and you need to place these counters in the middle. Counters are a little bit different from normal game counters. These have a colour on both sides. To make these ones, I've simply put um, two poker chips together. Uh, these ones were done with glue, you could do them with blue tack, uh, but we need 64, enough to fill the whole board. And this is the way the game starts, and then it's a turn-based game with each player, two players, each player picking a colour, either playing blue or red. So each player in turn places a counter onto the board. Blue's first turn, they can place their counter in any unoccupied square. Yep. Any of these spots. There is one rule about placing counters. When you place your counter, you must play to capture a counter belonging to the opposing player. So to capture a counter, you must place your counter so that an opposing colour is between two of your counters. So in this case, blue would capture red. What happens is that this counter is then turned over to become a blue counter. Now it belongs to the blue player. Alternatively, blue could also capture a red counter by playing here. And again, the red counter is flipped over. Red's turn. They must place the red side up in an occupied space. And the same rule applies. They must capture a blue counter. Uh, red has a couple of choices here. Red could play here and capture this blue counter. Or red could play over here and capture this blue counter. So diagonally, yeah, like so. And as you can see, blue plays again, for instance, here, captures this red, turns it into blue. Red may play here. Now red, actually in playing in this space, has captured two counters. One here, and one here, so in both directions. So, so long as it's in the row extending from where the counter was played, there can be more than one capture. Blue now plays, and blue's watching out here and trying for this diagonal here to capture this piece. Red plays. Red can come here and capture two blues. So you can capture more than one counter on a turn in a line. You can see here, there's a red there and a red there at each end. Captures both the counters. Now, red may not have noticed this, but blue can now capture three counters. One, two, three. Just want to clarify quickly one other rule about the capturing of pieces. So if blue is going to play at the start of their turn and wants to capture the red piece here, they cannot play here and make a capture. Okay? There can't be a gap. So anytime there's a gap that's not going to be a legal capture, it needs to be directly adjacent. So sometimes there will be gaps in the board and those gaps uh, don't count in the row that's being captured. 
if that makes sense. And that's how the game goes. The board gradually fills up with counters. Counters are never removed from the board. The game is simply played till every space uh, is taken. If you can't capture a counter on your turn, then you simply miss a turn. Doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. And so the game continues out to extend to the edge of the board. Uh, sides are quite important to get because once you get the sides, you're kind of a bit more protected from being captured yourself. So it continues until the whole board is filled. We'll play this game a bit further and then see what it looks like near the end. So blue just played, red to play. And red's in quite a tough position now. So red will come out here. And so on. So you can see the board chops and changes quite a bit as the game goes on and it's not always obvious who's going to end up on top. Getting the sides or corners is very important. The other thing I'll just point out here is if you're setting up a game like this it's quite handy to have some simple rules uh, available so your kids or you can just look back at them. So I just quickly scribble down here the main rules of the game. Just a nice way to remember. Let's see what happens near the end of the game. <coughs> okay, this game's moved on quite a bit further. Uh, it's probably not that easy to see the strategy when you're just watching the video, but capturing the corners is very important. Uh, it is a very simple game to learn how to play, but learning how to win uh, takes quite a bit more time. Uh, you can see here that blue uh, while they corners initially, red took the first corner, blue took the second. Blue's unfortunately let red get this other corner here and has just made a, uh, a number of flips. Of course, by holding this corner, red was not able, to, you know, blue holding this corner meant red was not able to get that whole row. And here, red can't get this row when they play here because there's an empty spot. Fortunately for blue, they can take that last empty spot and they actually get one two, three, all of those were between another blue counter. So you can see it's very much a, a game of territory. If we just play this game out quickly, maybe not very well, you'll see how it finishes. So it's Red's turn again. Red can come in here. But as you can see, Blue's got quite a strong position. Blue will come over here. Red in here to try and capture these. Blue in here, those and those, and also that, but then red coming right into here, we get that, and we get these, and that one. Now, looking at the diagonal, blue can't actually play in that corner because they will not make a capture because red has the other diagonal. So they will instead come in here. And red will play for the last catches of game one. Two, there. And can't get this row because blue's at the other end. And then basically at the end of the game you count how many uh, each how many counters each player has on the board. Red has one, two, has eight, plus six, it's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Got less than half the counters. Blue have the majority. Blue wins the game. All over, start again. Games can play out quite quickly. Uh, initial games, people are going to see pretty quickly that they probably made a few mistakes and want to play again. Um, a little bit like Connect 4, quickish games. Games are a little longer, obviously, than Connect 4, but I think uh, anyone playing it, your kids in your program, they'll want to have another go and see if they can do better. Uh, also, probably lends itself quite well to playing in teams. So, uh, you know, a couple of people on each side, each alternating turns uh, to place counters. So that's Othello. Um, give it a go. Not hard to make counters and a very simple board.